Have you ever wondered how to capture the breathtaking shimmer of a hummingbird in your artwork? Well, today's your lucky day. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how using soft pastels and a touch of iridescent magic. Come on into the studio and let me show you how. Let's talk about this surface. It's called pastel matte and I really love it. This is a large pad, 12 by 15 and a half inches. It comes in individual sheets, but I like these pads because it has different colors and I am going to actually be working on white because I wanted to control the color of the background. I divided up one large sheet into five sections. These are five tutorials that will be coming and this was the first of this beautiful hummingbird. The reference image is from unsplash.com and just look at the shimmer of these feathers with an iridescence to them. And the painting size of that upper right image where I'll be working is five and a half by eight inches. Now I am going to create a really soft and moody underpainting. The reason I chose the white surface is I wanted to tone this my own color and I loved some of the soft muted colors in the reference image. And I'm just going to be using water and a brush. This is a really nice watercolor brush to create this background effect. Now I am speeding it up here on the Monet Cafe version of this lesson, but if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, I have the full tutorial of this lesson with everything in slower speeds to watch the underpainting come to life. But basically what you're seeing in this speed version is me literally turning these soft pastels into paint. So you can wet pastels and create these nice soft effects by blending them. Make sure to use a water-friendly surface. And I am showing just my little sketch of my hummingbird. This is a neat little trick that I do. Again, on my Patreon page, I, I describe exactly how I do it. But basically, I get a little sketch on the back side of my reference image and I burnish it onto my drawing surface or painting surface. I don't always work this way. I prefer freehand sketching, but again, I had five paintings I had to complete. This is a, a really fast and easy way to transfer an image. So I am using a pastel pencil. This is just a brown pastel pencil, and it's the same one that I used to get the sketch on the back of the reference image. And I'm not trying to exactly recreate this bird. I am just getting in the essential elements. I want this bird to feel light and airy, not over detailed and heavy and stiff. And this is just my roadmap or my guide to getting in the correct anatomy for this bird. Now you guys, if you've been on my channel long, you know I love impressionism and things being loose and free. But when it comes to animals or people portraits, there are elements you do just need to get right. And I wanted to make sure I, I got things accurate. And now just a quick little station break before continuing. Would you please go ahead and like this video. It really helps YouTube to share this video more often and comment. I love to hear from you and by all means subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Also, I would love for you to become part of my Patreon family. Not only do you support this channel for only $5 a month, but you literally unlock hundreds of videos with the real-time content and full commentary. And I just love to have you as part of our family. Plus, I get to see your work. It's a great place. Now, I'm going to be adding to this nice muted background. These are some of the colors that I'm using. And I noticed in the reference image that there was some beautiful blues of the sky peeking through and uh, a little hint of turquoise and even some of the greens from some of the branches that are far away. We've got a perspective of depth here. Notice that the grasses or the grasses, the leaves in the foreground are the closest to you. So they have more detail. Then gradually things get less detailed, more blurry, more neutral um, in the distance. And you can see the initial uh, pastel portion where I wet it and blended it served as a perfect kind of warmth. Um, behind these colors that I'm adding. Uh, I had a video not long ago where I talked about uh, just the pastel uh, technique of layering and how important it is to layer colors and values and elements to create that feeling of depth. Now this is just a chamois cloth that I'm using to blend with. And a chamois cloth is just one of those sheets you use to like, uh, or cloths you use to dry your car with. They used to market it that way. Um, but I find on pastel matte, this surface, it works so great to soften and blend pastels. All right, I am ready to paint this hummingbird. Isn't it lovely? I mean, God's creation is just so magnificent. And 
I can't wait to get to the iridescent portion, but I first got to get down some of the basic colors and values. This is a little set of purples that I've accumulated. The head portion of the bird is quite dark, um, so I wanted to get enough of the darker purples. The first two that I've chosen here are Terry Ludwig pastels, and this is also a Terry Ludwig pastel. And um, there were some lighter purples as well. Um, so I got down those three values to get started. And I got one that was a little bit sharper on the end uh, because this is a small little image for me to paint with these big chunky pastels. So uh, it's gonna take some finesse. I'll show you a little trick of how I do that. You could probably also see there is a beautiful hint of pink in that hummingbird's head. And I found one of the most brilliant pinks is in this Jack Richardson set of hand rolled pastels. It's the Landscape 40 set. Isn't this pink just gorgeous? So I thought it was the perfect pink. You see those little hints of pink in there? So my goal is to layer some of the purple elements down first and then add the pink. These are some of the colors in the um, foreground branches and leaves that I be creating. Notice there's a beautiful combination of warm and cool greens. And these looked almost like eucalyptus leaves. And uh, so those are some of the greens I chose. This little sagey green was perfect for some of the under painting part of the hummingbird. That beautiful yellow, this nice little kind of tan uh, warm color, and uh, also a little salmony color. These are the colors I'm going to use for the breast, the initial layers of the breast of this bird. So so this um, sagey color pastel is a nice middle value and I found it was good for just getting in those values that aren't too dark and aren't too light. Now if you're new to pastel painting or painting in general and you kind of like an impressionistic style, resist the urge to paint like a paint by number. We're not filling in little colors next to each other. We're layering in colors on top of each other. That's how it really works in nature. Um, colors are always bouncing off of and influencing each other. And so it's this beautiful layering technique. So my goal of this bird is first to do, much like I talk about with a landscape painting, it's to block in my main colors and values just keeping it very loose, a little sketchy. I am making kind of directional marks because I know that breast is kind of curving towards the viewer. So I do try to make marks that accentuate that. And uh, I'm not at all concerned right now of getting in all of the little details. You can see on his little breast down at the bottom when I pull the image in closer, um, there's a lot of little details. If we were to zoom in with a magnifying glass, we'd see there's all these little curved feathers. They appear to have a little dot in the center of each one. I'm not going to try to represent that that way because that's not how we view things in life. We look at um, main elements like the eyes and the beak and some of the colors. And if you try to detail everything, all of a sudden your paintings are going to become very artificial, almost pasted on. So uh, we, we want to really balance the things that we uh, bring focal interest to uh, and it doesn't need to be everywhere. So now that I've uh, gotten in some of the colors and values that I feel represent this bird, I focus mostly on values over color, by the way. You've got to get your value just means the lightness or darkness of the element or the or what you're painting. But now that I've got these in, I do want to soften it. And this is kind of a small area. So I'm choosing to blend with this is a, a little tool. Uh, from Pan Pastels, P-A-N Pastels, and it's a nice little tool for blending little areas like this. And I'm just trying to soften these colors and values. Now I am, when you see it, the tool move out of the screen, I am wiping it off on a paper towel so as not to blend the colors all together. I want to make sure I specifically don't contaminate the lighter areas. Notice I started with the lighter area and then I kind of moved to the darker areas. And this is just going to really just give that nice, soft, blurry, out of focus feeling to this. Um, so yeah, now I just clean the tool off a little bit on a paper towel. Now I'm going back to that lighter area. Oops, I had to flip it over. I actually was cleaning it so hard that I rubbed a hole in it. So remember with these applicator tips, you can flip them over and use the other side um, if you need to freshen it up. And uh, once I get um, some of these elements just blended a little, I just continue to work 
more on the blocking and stage of the bird. Now this, speaking of a focal point element, this will be the main focal point element, obviously the head of the animal, typically with animals or people, uh, the head is going to be one of the main focal points. And so you can see, okay, here's my thing I was talking about, these big chunky pastels. I sometimes can't even see where it's landing. So how do I know? How do I know where my mark is, is hitting the surface? Well, it's a, a technique that I've used over the years. I think many pastel artists do it, especially if you're working this small, where if you can't see where your pastel is landing, I literally feel my way. I first make a little tap. Often my first mark will be just a little tap. I'll pull it away to see where it landed. And then I can kind of feel, and I'm constantly lifting and looking and lifting and looking and uh, getting my pastel marks where they need to be. Now here's that pretty pink color. And this is just my, my first idea of where some of this pink is. Notice that I layered it over the purple and um, I'm just making sure I'm getting some of these elements in the correct space. And I know it's kind of uh, hard to even see what I'm doing because the pastel is literally in my way and your way uh, visually. And uh, I'm just going to kind of jump ahead just a little bit to show you a little bit more of my strategy. So I, I knew I needed to get the bird's head just a little bit wider there. And so here you can see I slowed it down a bit. See where I'm just making these little marks to uh, fill in um, just color and value to get the anatomy of the head correct. I do love this really pretty purple. It's a little bit lighter and a little warmer than my darker purple. And you can notice in the reference image, the bird's head is very dark. Now I do lighten it up as I layer some other colors uh, coming up soon. Um, also too, I got a little bit of some of my pastel dust on my background just above the bird's head, but I do correct that later. Now this is a light pastel. I just knew I needed to get something light. It's kind of a pinkish color, but it doesn't matter the color. I just wanted something light to get that little highlight on the bird's eye. He's got a little reflection on his eye and a little bit of a band of light above it. And talk about a small mark making here. Um, I would like to do this again larger so I didn't have to be quite so um, tedious about all these little marks. Uh, but you can see this is a little bit of a, um, a tedious process because this bird's head is very important to get it correct. And I'm feeling pretty good about it now. Now here's where I am just adding a little more layers to the background to cover up where that, that dust from the dark pastels that I used got on the background. And I'm just doing a little more blending as well. Now I will work on the background a little more towards the end, but this is enough to keep going. Now this is a pastel pencil. It's a brown pastel pencil. It's the same one I used to uh, get that little sketch where I did the little transfer. And uh, again, I'm just kind of reinforcing my sketch. Um, it got lost a little bit. And what I wanna do with the wings is just to get the gesture of these wings. This bird, he's not quite in flight because his, his little feet are on the branch, but it's like he just landed. And you can see in the reference image, the wings are still kind of in motion. So we don't want too much hard detail, hard lines. We want our lines to be gestural and loose. And I'm gonna use that little blending tool uh, later um, to blend the wings as well so that he feels like he's just uh, a little bit in flight still. And now's where I'm just getting a little bit more elements and color to the background and uh, still working on getting some of the darks in the wings. Now this one wing to our right is kind of curved over. You can tell it, the feathers at the end kind of curve over. So I'm trying to represent that with my mark making. And uh, so this will get developed more as I paint, but uh, just wanted to get that feeling of wings, you know, in, in flight or almost in flight as he lands. And now let's zoom in once more and check out layering some of these beautiful pinks again. Um, so now I'm gonna get a little more um, just uh, specific about where some of these marks are. With this little particular species of hummingbird, um, these pink marks are kind of right beside his little skinny beak and down, just kind of like freckles, down on this darker part above his breast. And uh, later, I promise you the iridescent pastels are coming and it is gonna make this shimmer and sparkle. All right, so I'm using this pastel pencil to get his little feet. Um, I didn't want them quite this dark. It, it, they do kind of soften up in color later, but uh, I knew they needed to be really delicate 
bird's feet need to be thin, gestural, and barely there. Uh, it really makes your bird look um, artificial, amateur, um, if your lines are too hard or stiff or too thick. So I use the same little pastel pencil to just gently sketch in where some of my darker areas were. And I don't often work in pastel pencil, but the times that I resort to it is when I have um, just something that's this small and I can't get in all those little spaces. So they do come in handy. But I've had my same set of pastel pencils since I um, bought them many, many years ago. That's how little I use them. I'll have links to all of these products in the description of this video. Now I did come to um, uh, an area that was lighter. So I got this white pastel pencil just to get a few of the little highlights um, where I could see the little marks on the bird. And here's where I'm using that blending tool to just soften these wings a bit to make them feel like they're blurry and in motion. It's obviously that way in the reference image. Here's where I'm developing a little bit more of the color and just beautiful layers to give that impression of feathers on the bird. And I've mentioned this a lot, pastel is really all about layering. Do you see how different this looks from the first layers I put down? I actually sometimes lose people at the beginning because they think it's not looking very good, but that's just how it works. Now, my Patreon version of this has all of the background and slower speed with me talking you through the process, um, but I'm speeding this up right now because I want to jump ahead and show you the beautiful iridescent pastels. I did want to mention though that when you do the little branch that he's on, make sure it's just very gestural and thin and delicate. You don't want a big chunky thick um, little branch that he's on. Plus he's little and he's light. The iridescent pastels I'll be using are from Mount Vision. Now, I've broken mine. I like them in smaller pieces. And I'm going to be using this purple and also a beautiful turquoise color just to highlight where some of that shimmer is. Now this can be bought as a set. The ones that you saw of mine, it's a 15 set of Mount Vision iridescent pastels. They also have a five set of dark iridescent colors. I'll have all these links in this video description. But if you just wanted to purchase the sticks that I used, the color numbers are 1010 for this beautiful sparkly purple and 1012 for the turquoise color. They can be purchased on Mount Vision Pastel Company's website. And yay, it's finally time to apply these iridescent beauties. Again, it's about a layering process. I'm just gently layering in little bits of this pretty sparkly purple, just in some areas for some iridescent shimmer. I put a little bit in the tail and then I started to put some on the wing and it was okay on the tail, but in the wing, I brushed that out later. I felt like it was drawing too much attention to the wings when I wanted them to feel in motion. And I actually see here that I did use a little bit of this blue. This is color number 1011. And and I switched to the turquoise. I still did like a little bit of the blue there, but this turquoise really looked very much like the color that I was seeing in the reference image. I wanna zoom in more to show you the sparkle. It really doesn't show up as good in film as it does with your eyes in real life. And these colors just really shimmer. I gave a little more detail and definition to those beautiful foreground leaves and branches. I enjoyed this painting so much and these beautiful iridescent pastels because I just am in awe over hummingbirds and the gorgeous sparkly glittery quality that they have. And I'm in awe of our amazing creator who gave us all this beauty, right? So this is the final. I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like the full version, you can become a patron of mine only $5 a month. Or if you don't like subscribing to things, you can buy the full individual lesson for $15 on my Patreon page. All right, everyone, as always, God bless and happy painting.